G'day everyone and welcome back to the shed. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about this windscreen frame that I've been replacing for our Dodge Brothers project. Now here's the original and as you can see it's pretty tired. It's nearly 100 years old and it's quite a complicated section so it's little wonder that it's filled up with water and rusted away. Now it's got two jobs. The first job is it's got to hold the glass in place around the frame and stiffen the glass up so that it can actually open and close in the car. But it's also got to hold a rubber seal around the outside of it to actually stop the draft going past the glass and making the driver and the passenger uncomfortable. So I looked at the profile and I thought, wow, how on earth did they make that? But on close examination, it's just a circular section that's had a recess pressed in on this side and what appears to be the same recess pressed into the opposite side has been crimped in later on to form the seal channel. Now to get my shape, I sort of figured if I could make a folded C shape or a piece of channel a bit like this and if I could press the appropriate width piece of flat section in there I could actually create a little channel for the glass to go that would be very similar to the original. So to do this I made a bit of tooling to go in the press brake and experimented with a few sizes and we came up with a piece that comes up like this. So I'm just going to run that through the brake and I'll show you how I did it. Now for our tooling to form this section up I needed to have something that would hold the legs of the C-section secured in there and I needed something to support the side wall so that they wouldn't want to bulge out in the wrong spot. But I also needed a depth gauge so that once the press came down it would bottom on something and we would know that we'd achieved our full shape. So this is what I came up with. Me being me and not wanting to waste materials on making something unique for one job, I have used the sorts of materials that I'm regularly using in the shop and I've only spotted it together so I can easily knock this apart and use all this material to make something else. So we'll put this in here and we'll throw it in the press and we'll squash it a bit. Just got to get it centred under the bar. So this is the basis of our shape. There's our channel for our glass to sit into. These areas here are much too wide compared to the original. But from here I knew I'd have to go to the pull max and actually feed this in here and reshape these sides a little bit. So I've made some unique tooling for that and we'll go and do that now. Now to make our tooling to form our pieces up I needed a top tool which could pick up these edges and stop them from flying out and getting bent out of shape. But also it needed to snug down around the little glass channel to stop it wanting to spread further out and flatten inside the shape as it was being hammered through the pull max. So it's got these two little points on there to just catch the edge of the fold and hold it in place. The lower tool is the one that it's going to shape into. So it's curled on the sides and I made that by just grinding this shape in here, sitting it into the original frame and then just cutting some small pieces of flat bar curling them a little bit and then clamping them onto the original windscreen frame and putting some weld on there and then I've reinforced these edges so they can't spread and come out. So we'll throw them in there but you can see from this what it's going to do. It's going to catch that bulge out edge there and bring it down and bring it into a nice point once it runs through. I only ever just eyeball the centre of the pull max tools which is usually enough to get the results I'm after. And I just nip this bottom chuck up so that the bottom tool won't want to rattle in there as we're working it.
We needed a little bit of lubrication on this shape just to let it feed through that tooling. But now we've got this very nice close to original edge here next to where the glass goes in it. It's got the nice rolled edges that the original has. And because this little centre post inside the tooling is at 3 eighths of an inch wide, which is what the glass opening is, it has pushed this edge into exactly 3 eighths of an inch wide for the glass to sit into. And the depth is exactly that of the original because, once again, the post is the same depth as what the original was in the Dodge Brothers channel rather than the Rob channel. The legs have spread a little bit and I've got a little bit of a reverse curve in here but I made a little anvil to work that out of on the bench. I just put it through there and tapped it down with the hammer. So we'll take it to that stage now and then we can push it one step further and turn it into the seal channel. So I made this little anvil and it just goes into the vise and I can work on the edge here. But what it does, I've got a tapered face along here and I can sit the channel over it and then I can just curl the edges with the planishing hammer and get the curved edge back into the shape of the material. Now very quickly with a few passes I can actually get this curved shape back into the material and although I've got a few waves here on this little test piece, on the one that I made I sat there and I just took the time to planish them all out, get it all nice and straight along the edges and then I had one half of the windscreen frame. So we've got the edge now that the glass fits into, we've just got to convert this one now into the one the seal can slide into. And the seal is like a T-shaped piece of rubber. It's got a flap, probably about an inch, a little bit around that long pokes out the bottom of the glass. And it's got a T-shaped top, which has actually got to fit into a recess in the frame to hold it in place so it won't fall out. So I'll go and change the tooling in the pull max, and what we're going to do is actually pinch this in and form it into a little channel for the rubber seal to go into. Tricky stuff. If we look in detail at the bottom tool, it has got a little rib through the middle, which is the thickness of the rubber seal. And then when we look at it from side on, it's got curled edges to actually let that piece drop in and curl in to form the little channel. And it leaves a little gap in between for the, rubber to the top of the T-shaped rubber to slide into. So we'll poke him in there and give him a run and I'll show you how that works. So now we've got the little T-shaped channel in there for the top of the rubber to slide into. Now, I've also got to bend this each way, and I'll show you that in a minute, but the problem I've got, once I bent it, it tended to collapse this little area in there. So I'll just jump ahead and show you what I did to straighten that out. But I made a little shuttle that I could hammer through here to just open that little section in there for the head of the T to fit into up, and then that opened that up. But I did it after I bent it, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So here's the little section I made, and it's just a piece of flat section that I've ground a little piece out of and then shaped the head, and I've put a pointed edge on the lead side of it so that it will actually go into there, and then I can actually hammer it, and it will open up the channel inside there to the shape I want it to be. I just put it in there 
and basically just drove it through with the hammer. So that has ensured that I've got exactly the right shape inside now so that the new rubber will slide straight in. Now this is the only piece that wound up being waste on this job. This was the first section I made and I experimented a little bit and I wound up kinking it in a couple of places and I repaired it. But the only thing really wrong with this was the channel inside just wasn't quite deep enough. I had to change my dimensions and have a little bit more material in the centre of my little piece of channel before I folded it in to get the legs a little bit longer. So I'll show you what I did for shaping it with this one. But it shaped very easily bending it this way. And I could get most of the curve in it just doing the old tummy bend. And anywhere where it wanted to spread the legs out, it's getting a little bit of a ripple in it there. I could put it on my little anvil and I could planish those out and get a nice shape. The tricky bends were these ones on the ends that were quite tight. And once again, bending it in is harder than bending it the other way. Once we bend it the wrong way, all we've got to do is stretch the two legs. So that works quite easily. And I had a couple of posts welded onto the bench, put it between it, and just work my way along like that and put the curves in it that way. So then I wound up with a pair of pieces, one curved one way, one curved the other way. They butted together and between them they make a full-on windscreen frame. Then it's just a case of welding it up. So how do we go about welding both faces of a thing this big and around all these corners and keep it exactly the same shape as the original? We need to build a jig. So that's the next step. So here is the jig, made very quickly from a piece of scrap and some inch by eighth flat bar. So that's 25 by three mil flat bar. And all I did was welded a couple of stops on this edge, set the original frame up against it, held them tight, and then I shaped these pieces of metal, clamped them to the frame, and then just welded them down to the bottom piece of steel. So that gave me a jig, which matches the original frame exactly. I can lift it in and out. Now, the problem you've got is when you drop it into the jig, getting it out, this old rusty one was easy enough because I was able to get a screwdriver into some of the rust holes and lever them up. But I knew once I started making my good one, I'd have some other problems. So I've cut some little steps in the sides and I was able to put a screwdriver into the seal channel and just lift it up a little bit, walk it up to the point where I can get the screwdriver in the seal channel and lift the whole thing out. So there's our replacement one. It also fits back into the hole. It's got a little bit of weld on there from where I was welding corners up, so once that's ground off it'll all work again. And from here, all I have left to do is put all the holes in it. It's got to have the holes for the windscreen pivot to go in. There's a little metal bracket fits in there with the thread in it, which holds a cap on each side to hold the glass in. And then there's two pull handles, one on each side to actually pull the windscreen back in if it's opened. So we've taken a flat piece of metal and turned it into a pretty good replica of a 1920s windscreen frame. Thanks for watching guys, we'll catch you next time, keep safe.